All right, we're going to get started with our media availabilities here following Bush Bowl qualifying at Daytona International Speedway in advance of the 61st annual Daytona 500. We are joined by Alex Bowman, who posted the second fastest time in qualifying today, and we'll start on the front row alongside his Hendrick Motorsports teammate. Alex drives the number 88 nationwide Chevrolet. We are also joined by Hendrick Motorsports owner Rick Hendrick. Just a couple of quick facts here for everyone. Hendrick Motorsports has won 13 Daytona 500 poles, including the last five in a row. Both, are which, both of which are records, and this will also be the youngest front row in Daytona 500 history. Uh, we will open up to questions for Mr. Hendrick and for Alex. Please raise your hand. We will get a wireless mic to you, and we'll start up here with Matt. Matt Weaver, Auto Week. This is for Rick. Uh, you guys have seemingly had, at least based on qualifying, obviously, the fastest cars here for the past five years. Last one, I believe that you guys won was five with Dale and Jimmy before that. Do you feel like y'all have had the best cars and circumstances of taking y'all out? How frustrating has it been to have the situation in turn four just when you know you've got a really fast car? Well, it, it, it's always uh, tough when you run this race, and uh, we, we've led, led a lot of laps, and we just haven't been able to close the deal, but that's that's part of it down here. And we kind of look at it like it's it's multiple races. You know, you got to qualify when I started. You just want to make the feel, you know, and nervous not to get in the race, and uh, and our we put a lot of a lot of emphasis on uh, trying to s sit on the pole and go for the front row, and uh, so I think we got the speed, we got to get the handling, you know, now down, and uh, I think we this is our you know second year w with this car, so I think we're going to be in good shape. So we'll see. It's a very competitive race, and you're you've got a lot of things that are not in your control. Go to Mark. Uh, Mark Arrow, PRN. Can't resist because Alex was in here the other day saying that you guys have still to set a date for this big match race that you know we've been hearing about. So You're I mean, killing me. So You're at, killing I mean, me. He was almost throwing the gauntlet down. I mean, I'm not trying to throw him under the bus or anything, but you know, I was just wondering at some point that <laughs> you're actually going to set him up, set him up, and set him down. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. not at all. <laughs> yeah, he started it. So for the record, he started it, and I didn't. <laughs> but I'm going to finish it. So it's going to uh, happen here in the next probably 90 days. He told me in between rounds of qualifying that if I beat him, it would be bad for my career. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Additional questions for Mr. Hendrick or Alex? Coming here to Greg. Greg Ingalato week on a, on a serious note, Mr. Mr. H, no matter what happens in the race or no matter what happens the rest of the season, because, you know, we could talk about you've done well and, but how valuable is this for your sponsors, for your, you know, your, 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 your partners, your, your stakeholders to have this moment in the sun, so to speak, because the, you know, this weekend kind of belongs to you guys now with this, with this front row. So how valuable is it overall? It, it's, 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 it's really valuable. I mean, you're right. You got a whole, excuse me, a whole week to celebrate this. And uh, our sponsors, we got everybody coming. This is one of the largest crowds of sponsors we have. It's going to be here next week. Uh, Allies brand new. Their CEO is on the phone. My phones were blowing up. The nationwide folks, uh, the, their, their, their folks are coming. So, uh, you know, Exalta took a chance on a young guy. And, uh, you know, so it, it's really neat for the sponsors to say, hey, we, we – we like these young guys, and we're going to support them. And uh, it's it's really good for Chad uh, to come out of the box with with you know he and William to sit on the front row. William at his age, so it's it's a big morale booster. You know, no secret we didn't have the year we wanted last year. So coming out of the gate, uh, no matter what happens, we get to celebrate this for uh, a few for a week. I've been down here when I had a car in the back, one in the front, one in the middle, qualifying, and then you have to answer the sponsors. Well. You know, why aren't you giving them the same stuff? You know, I've had that question for 35 years, of, or as many years as I've run two cars. So this year, to have them right on top of each other just means the organization did a heck of a job, engine shop, body shop, teams working together. So, uh, you know, you're right, man. This this is the deal, to sit on the pole at Daytona. Any additional questions? Up front to Godwin. Alex, usually second place is, yeah, but in this case, you did, I mean, it, it means something. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, um, 
it's so cool to be part of HMS one two three four. That's um, that's really neat, and just shows how well everybody's working together. Um, you know, to be locked into that front row, barring a disaster in the duel, is is really neat, and kind of lets us focus on getting our our car driving really well and learning what we can through the clash and the duel and everything. So it's cool to be a part of. Um, you know, you always want one spot more, and um, w it would be cool to have another Daytona five hundred pole, but. It's, uh, it's neat to see William get that. I'm proud of the 24 team as well as the 88 team and um, just really focused on uh, learning what I can in the, the next week and, and being the most prepared I can for the 500. We'll go back to Mark and then to Bob. Mark Carroll, Pierre, and Alex, you got kind of the same kind of start a year ago and didn't get the payoff. What do you think, will, will you do anything different? Is there something you've thought about uh, the, as far as the approach to the 500 and the duels that you can maybe use to make yourself stronger and more ready for Sunday and give yourself a better chance? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I hadn't speedway raced in over a year last year going into the duel in the 500, so that was a, a tough spot for me uh, to try to kind of get caught back up to where things were at um, rather quickly. So I think we ran really strong in the 500. We ran up front for a, a good amount of the day, and... Um, Really, we had a really good shot at it, and I just kind of butchered the last restart and, and didn't do a good job there and then got caught up in a crash. So, um, you know, that uh, I played that restart through my mind. I think we figured out where I messed up, and I knew what I did wrong as soon as I did it, but um, we, we fixed that that week and moved on from it. So, um, you know, I'm definitely more confident going into this year. This car has got more handling built into it, I feel like. Uh, I feel like it's just going to drive better, and and I'll be able to be more aggressive, and we're still obviously really fast. So um, I'm just ready to go, and uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to do my best to learn what I can throughout the week with the clash and the duel, but uh, I'm really confident going into the 500. Go to Bob. Bob Hockris, Fox Sports. Uh, Rick, do you have a message to the 24 and 88 teams on how to race on Thursday? And if you do, what is it? You know, Bob, I have, I have had messages and restrictor plate racing all of my racing life, and they never listened to me. So uh, I, I think, uh, you know, hey, draft together, and then they don't, uh, you know, try. But, no, we want to take care of the cars for sure. We want to be in a Sunday race, and uh, we don't want to put the cars in any, you know, unnecessary harm's way. But we're going to – we got to find out what we got, so we're going to race. But uh, you, 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 it's kind of a two-edged sword when you – on the front row – you don't want to take take a chance on tearing up a really good car, but you got to figure out what you have too. So we're going to race. Come over here to the far right to Hill. Hi, Rick. Over here, Hill Overton, WIXC Radio. Uh, Rick, it's obvious you guys were burning the midnight oil in the off season very much. So, where would you say you made the greatest gains? Because I know you were, didn't want a repeat of last year and. You, you certainly to be congratulated for all you've accomplished thus far. Well, you know this is this is one race with this car, and then we go to a new setup altogether when we leave here. But um, I think and, and to do to sit on the pole and be fast here, it takes everything. It, it, it's you stack in pennies in the engine shop. They work really hard, and you find a horsepower here and one there, and the bodies in the wind tunnel. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a, a tremendous team effort to build a car and not make any mistakes. And uh, the cars were just dead equal in the wind tunnel. The engines were within one horsepower. I mean, that's hard to do. And they were right on top of each other. So, uh, you know, the guys did their job. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, thought, I thought the Fords were going to be really fast and the Toyotas too, uh, you know, but we – I don't know where we picked up as much as we did. It was just a little bit of every area. Any, any final questions for Alex or Mr. H? All right, gentlemen, congratulations and good luck this week. Thanks. All right, we are now joined by the Bush Pole winner for the 61st annual Daytona 500. That is William Byron, driver of the number 24 Exalta Chevrolet. This is William's first Monster Energy Series Pole Award, and it is the, s 
and it is the 700th cup pole for Chevy. We are also joined by crew chief Chad Knauss. We will open it up to questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. All right, we'll start with Mark. Mark Carroll, PRN, for the both of you, did you come in expecting uh, this? Obviously, you thought you had fast cars, but was the expectation to come away with a pole, and how does it feel to indeed walk away with the Daytona 500 pole? Yeah, I think we're realistic. We probably thought, you know, we we're going to be somewhere in the hunt. Um, you know, the guys have done a lot of work to get down here. It's kind of been a, I guess, a hardworking offseason for them, and there's been a lot of things in the in the works. So I was excited to get down here and see what we had, but ultimately you never know who's going to, you know, pop up and, and be competitive and fast down here. So um, great to get a, a pole, big for Chevrolet, I guess, with their accomplishment there. So um, we're looking forward to kind of checking this off and going on to Sunday. We'll go to Matt. Oh, yeah, I, we, you, you, much like William said, you never know what you're going to have until you get down here with the limited amount of track time that you have. <clears throat> so, but based off of what we had last year, we felt like we were going to come down and be competitive. I'll be honest, when the Penske guys went out there, I didn't think we were going to be able to necessarily eclipse what they put up. Um, and then, uh, fortunately, we did. So, a lot of hard work and a lot of effort for, for, for and from everybody at HMS to be able to do that. The top four spots, that's a pretty amazing feat, I feel. Um, if you go back and you look at our qualifying efforts at the Super Speedways, the last handful of races, all four of those cars have been in a pretty tight box, and that's a pretty amazing thing to do. Matt Weaver, Auto Week. Uh, obviously, you have to have the cars to be able to do what the SHR guys did at Talladega in October, but you guys seem to have really good cars, one, two, three, four here in qualifying. Is there a possibility that you guys, if you can get linked up, one, two, three, four, I know it's not Talladega, but maybe try to replicate what they did there in October? I think we can give it a go. That's kind of the plan, obviously. Uh, this is a different animal at Daytona than what it is at Talladega. Uh, handling comes into play significantly more. Um, the 150, I don't think, will be a true judge of that. Uh, I think we, from the, the 24 standpoint, are going to probably pull, pull that and play that pretty conservative and not really try to make anything like that happen. Um, but in the 500, you never know, especially with a short run at the end. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I think um, you know this is a long race. Uh, I felt like from last year, um, it was one of the longest that I ran. So um, the, the mental energy and physical energy, physical is not that much, but the mental energy of the whole race is, is very long. So you really don't know who's going to be around once you get to 15 or 10 to go. Um, and then once you get to that point, um, it's kind of, you know, anything goes at that point. So you just start pushing anybody and trying to get to the front. But we'll try to link up, um, but it's going to be hard to do. Yeah. We'll stay here to the right with Zach, and then we'll go to Holly. Zach Catanzaretti, kickingthetires.net. Chad, um, obviously more than most polls of the season, this one's really, really big for the team and all the work that everybody did behind behind the scenes. How does this poll really kind of help the team when it comes to their attitude for not only this week, but starting the season off knowing that they're building fast cars? I think it's huge. Uh, William can attest to this. We've had a lot of, a lot of late nights, a lot of long hours. Uh, we loaded up on... I guess it was Thursday, right? Yeah, 11.30. I don't even know what day it is anymore. I was going to bed, and these guys were loading up the car. I was <laughs> like, ridiculous. So, you know, we've, we've been working really hard. And these guys, have, the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is, yes, we have a very fast race car. It's very easy to slow down a fast race car if you don't get the details met. And the thing that we've worked on extremely hard uh, during the offseason with the new guys that we've got on the team is just the procedures, uh, going through the procedural uh, duties and making sure we don't miss anything and that's a big thing into being able to go to the racetrack and execute so pretty pretty amazing really go to holly holly <laughs> kane the nascar wire service kind of along those lines i'm just wondering if you guys could talk about this is the most fabulous way you could start off working <laughs> together i would imagine you could have yeah. is winning the pole for the daytona 500 yeah it's uh, it's really cool i mean this guy's done a lot over the off season for me to to get developed and ready to go and um like he was saying with the guys, just the little things are, are huge. So I feel like there's a lot of things that um, we're going through for the first time. But for me, it's kind of being here for the second time feels really comfortable. So I get to go through the garage the same way. Don't have to worry about the, the new uh, newness of the Cup Series. So I'm looking forward to that. And, um, you know, I know we got a hungry group of guys to go after it with. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it really is. The last time I came here with a new driver, we sat on the front row or sat on the pole. So it's it's – it's kind of cool. It really is. It's it. This is really special for me. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of you people were 
here back in the 24 days and it's and it's uh, it's youth and to be a part of that and be able to come back as crew chief of the 24 car and qualify first for the Daytona 500 is just just an awesome dream for me go go to Greg up here Greg a lot of week um, Chad you, you always seem like the kind of guy that enjoys teaching enjoys mentoring that and and obviously you may not have had that with Jimmy in the last few years but now you got this young kid uh, young, how man. Mu- young man <laughs> the yeah the uh in the off season how much mentoring how much time did you spend and how rewarding is it to be able to have that kind of young man driver to to be able to do that with now I, I, I mean we've spent we've spent a good amount of time together um I'm looking forward to the season to get going so we can spend more time together for sure um I do enjoy working with with young young talent. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun for me. Um, so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to, to to growing this relationship and seeing how it goes and and goes and grows. So it's it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the off season. I know you guys think I'm a geek and all that, man, but I've I've really enjoyed working with this team and these guys and the enthusiasm. Um, and no, nothing against where I was. You need to understand that. It's just it's a new it's a new thing, and it's it's great, man. It's a lot of fun and. I think he's got a lot of potential. Um, his dedication and drive and desire to go out there and be one of the best drivers in the sport is evident. And I think his ability is pretty obvious just what he's accomplished in the past. So um, you put that work ethic and that ability together and you get a pretty impressive little little thing there. Go back to Mark. Mark Carroll, PRN. William, now you get to ride the, the fine line for Thursday. I mean, how how hard do you think you need to race to make sure you know what you have for the 500? D- and do you you know maybe dare like, hey, I got a fast car, let me try to go win this, win this qualifying race? <laughs> no, I mean it's kind of uh, for me the duel doesn't matter at this point. You know, we're this was the goal to get the top two spots. Um, you know, and if we were second, that was great too. But um, you know, the poll's good, and uh, now our our goal is, I mean, really. What we have in the duel is nothing like what we're going to have on Sunday, so it's not even worth, you know, scaring yourself or doing whatever uh, to to figure it out. I, I learned that last year the hard way, so um, I think that you know I just look forward to being a part of it and seeing what that brings. And then Friday and Saturday is really our hardworking days, and really the conversations we'll have are important too. Does it does it bother you at all to you know have the car then you and Chad at some point decide okay time to shut her down and back down through the field and get out of this stuff? That's sort of like anti-race driver, you know. Uh, yeah. how, how hard is that to do? I mean, it's looking forward to the bigger goal. The bigger goals, you know, we're here for the 500, not for set or Thursday night. So, um, so I mean, from an outside perspective, yeah, maybe if I was watching, uh, you know, but I don't, I don't care. I don't think it matters. I'd put it in the garage if I could. <laughs> <laughs> Just being frank. So, um, it's it's just not worth it, man. You know, we've got we've got a great race car. Um, we're racing at night for the 150. It's it's a completely different race once you get there to Sunday, so it's not worth it. When it comes to the far right to Hill. Hi, Chad. Uh, Hill over to WNDB Radio. Uh, Two-part question, actually. Number one, does this make you feel like 21? You're 21 again now with a new exciting <laughs> opportunity and the fact that uh, you've done this before with <laughs> Jimmy way back when you started him out as a young guy, and now here you're winning the pole with William. But... That's one question. The other question is, we all know it takes horsepower to run fast on a plate track as well as the arrow. Have you guys found a significant amount of a da- a added horsepower during the off season? Yeah, our engine shop is pretty pretty amazing. I think you can see that just from the accomplishments they've had over the course of the last, well, course of its existence, pretty pretty spectacular. And to have all of those cars on the, the first four qualifying positions is pretty remarkable. Um, as far as feeling 21 again, Man, I'm a long ways from that. You know, a wise man told me once, he said, when I was young, I used to go to bed sore and wake up feeling fine. Now that I'm old, I go to bed feeling fine, I wake up sore. And that, <laughs> there's some reality to that. So, um, but, you know, I, it has put some some wind in the sails for sure, you know, um, to be around a younger a young group of guys again, um, seeing that enthusiasm, the, the, the big eyes, the open eyes is, is a lot of fun. And um, it's going to be it's going to be a great time. Any final questions? All right, gentlemen, well, congratulations and good luck next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you.